getting the folder structure and general architecture of how you architect your React application is very difficult. It's hard to get it right. There are so many resources that you can look at online and everybody seems to be telling you a slightly different version of the same thing. This is by no means going to be the perfect or the only folder structure that you can have in a React application, but it's going to be enough to get you a solid base, a solid foundation that you can then build upon when you're building your own application. Now, before we start, if you still haven't joined the Discord, I would strongly recommend that you do so because you are missing out on a lot of things. Cool, so we're now on my computer and I have here a very simple application that I built using Vite, so it's super lightweight and easy to work with. And this is generally the kind of files that you would see whenever you're first initializing your React application. You have here a bunch of configuration files, you have your SRC folder, you have a public folder, and of course you have the node modules folder. What I want to focus on for this video is this SRC folder right here, the inner content of a React application. This is where we're going to create our folder structure to hopefully have a very efficient and well-designed React application. Now, disclaimer, if you're using a framework like Next.js, for example, you might have the option to not use an SRC folder, you might have this in your app directory directly. That is fine, that doesn't really matter for this tutorial. What really matters is that we're talking about the inner files of a React application and how we structure those. Cool, so the first folder that I want us to look at is a folder that is called Pages. Now this folder might have a different name if you're on Next.js, for example, if you're using the new app router, this will be called App. If you're using the old router, this will be called Pages. Or if you're on React Native, this will be called Screens. The Pages folder, or whatever you wanna call it, is essentially the folder where all of your root level pages that a user can go to will live. This folder will essentially determine the skeleton of your React application and how a user would navigate through it. For example, most apps have a home screen, right? The first screen that a user sees, whether or not they're logged in, that doesn't really matter. You would come in here, you would create a file called home screen. .tsx, and this file would show some content to the user. Also, if your app has authentication, you might have a login screen, .tsx, which will be shown to the user if they're not logged in. Perhaps there's a user dashboard that the user can go to, so we'll have dashboard screen .tsx. And if you're using Next.js, for example, you might be able to group things under related folders, for example, logged in, and then we will put here the home screen inside of logged in because we only want that screen to be accessible by logged in users. And also the dashboard screen would also make sense to put it there, right? You can customize this folder exactly how you want. There's no rules for how it should be done. There's no better or worse way. It's really the right way that is right for your application. But you have to understand that the way that you structure this folder is going to directly impact the structure of your React application and how users navigate to it. So this is a very important folder. Besides pages, we should also create a components folder because as cool as it is to have pages in our application, we actually need to have content to display on those pages. So I'm going to open a new folder, components, and this folder is going to hold all of the components that we use when we're building our application. For example, UI primitives like buttons, text inputs, select inputs, modals, forms, anything that is small, that is not made up of other smaller components that we use to build each individual application or pages and even other bigger reusable components. So we can create here a button component that will hold the code for our button. It might have some reusable functionality that we use across our application. It might have some styles that we want all of our buttons to have based on a different state. Is it pressed? Is it hovering, right? This is the place that you would put the code for a button component. You might also have something like a text input.tsx, which again will be similar to the button component. It's a UI primitive. Anywhere in your application that you want to show a text input, you could directly use this component. We might also have a form if you're using Using forms in our application. Again, this will vary depending on the type of application that you have. But if you do use forms, the form would go in the components folder. And generally, any other small component that again is small, UI, reusable, primitive, and is not made up of smaller components. And the reason I say not made up of smaller components is because in an application, you can have bigger components that are still reusable that are not part of the same category as these components right here. For example, since we have authentication in this application, what if we had a file called delete account 
modal.tsx. This file would be a modal, this component would be a modal, it might be reusable because we can probably use this in multiple screens in our application, but it's not the same kind of component as these other ones right here. Because this one, although it is reusable and although it is a component, it itself is made up of smaller components. For example, since this is a modal, it's probably going to use this modal component to display itself as a modal. If we're asking the user for any sort of input before deleting their account, we might use this text input component. If we need to wrap it in a form component, we might do that as well. And finally, for the user to actually delete their account, they're going to have to press a button, which is going to come from this button component right here. So you see, there is a distinction between this delete account modal and these buttons component here. This delete account modal is a different kind of component. So in those cases, what I like to do is I like to create a subfolder inside of the components folder called UI. And in this folder, I'm going to put the button, the form, the modal, the text input, and any other UI primitive component inside of this folder. And the reason I'm doing this is so that we have a visual differentiation between our UI primitive components and all of the other components that, again, are components, are reusable, but they're not of the same kind. This makes it easier whenever someone wants to create a component, they can ask themselves, is this a UI primitive component? If yes, put it in the UI folder. If not, put it in the general components folder. It generally helps with the organization of your React project and this distinction between the components is big enough that for me it's worth it to have a separate folder. Now besides pages and components there's another folder that is guaranteed to be there in every single React application. That folder is called the hooks folder so hooks and there we go. Because we're using React and we are working with hooks, we need to have a whole dedicated folder to all of the custom hooks that we'll create in our application. Because it is React best practice to extract shared logic in custom components that can then be used anywhere in the application. For example, some of the hooks that are usually used in an application would look something like this. We'll have use debounce. TS. This is a hook that will delay the updating of a value for a certain amount of time, usually in milliseconds. And usually this hook is useful when you want to prevent sending too many requests to a backend as the user types. Another useful hook that I might have is something called use current user .ts, which will give me access to the current user if I'm using authentication and if the user is available. Some other hooks might include something small like a use countdown.ts, which basically allows me to have a countdown anywhere in the app super easily or something like use effect after mount use effect after mount .ts, which is exactly like your use effect except it will skip running the code if it's the first render and will only run the code on subsequent renders and generally you would put in here any custom hook that is used in your application no matter how specific that is why you have a whole separate folder called hooks dedicated to that then we have another folder and this one honestly can depend on your use case it's not always going to look like this but still the concept is important i'm going to call it services folder this folder will hold any type of service that your application might consume, whether it's third party, in-house, or even something in between. For example, if you have an API in your application, I would create a folder called API and put it here. This folder would hold all of the code related to the API, the requests, the wrappers, the types for the responses and the requests, and generally anything that is related to fetching stuff on the server. Obviously, if you're using Next.js or some other framework that has an opinion on this, you might do it differently. That doesn't matter. What matters is that API is generally considered a service that your application consumes. It's so it makes sense for it to have its own folder. Then if your application uses multiple languages, you might have something like I18N, which is basically the standard library for handling handling internalization in your application. Again, that's also a service that your application consumes. This one is a fully third party service and will require some files and some configuration that will go inside of this folder. Then if you're using any sort of global state management, for example, Redux or Mobex or Flux or Recoil or any other library, I would usually have a state folder here. Again, you would put all of your reducers, your actions, your state classes, anything that is related to the state in its own separate folder so that you can then import it in your application wherever you need state. And finally, usually what I'll have, not in every application, but a decent amount of applications is something that I call providers. Providers is essentially any sort of provider that your application might use. Generally, this might look like something that you wrap your entire app with, right? There's a ton of third-party libraries that have you use a provider and wrap your entire app with it. But at the same time, it could be stuff that you create. Maybe you have a certain context that you want to inject stuff in your own application. You can 
create a provider. You might even call this folder context if you're only using it for context. And then you can use that provider in your application and give access to some value across your entire app, right? The possibilities are endless. And like I said, this really depends on the application that you're building and whatever the application's needs are. And finally, a folder that I love that I use in 100% of my React applications, a folder that is often underrated is something called the utils folder. The utils folder is beautiful. It's one of my favorite folders ever because it's there for anything that is small, that is still useful, and that doesn't really have another folder that it makes sense to put it in. For example, something that I always have in the utils folder is a file that I call helpers, helpers.ts. This file will have any sort of function that I use in my application that is small, useful, and that doesn't really belong anywhere else. For example, let's say that in my app, I want to do something specific when I'm merging two objects of a specific kind. I will then create a function, have that functionality here. I might even use a third party library to help me do it. And then I can import this function from anywhere in the code and just use it as a little helper. I would also do something similar with a file called formatting, formatting.ts. In here would go any sort of function that is helpful with formatting things, with formatting currencies, dates, numbers, you name it, whatever the app needs. Again, you can also use third-party libraries to format things and then create your helper functions and then use those to easily have the same continuous functionality across your app. You can literally put anything in this utils folder as long as it follows these rules. It's small, it's useful, and it doesn't fit anywhere else in your application. And with this, we've kind of covered a very solid foundation for how you would argue architect your folders in your React application. Again, this is by no means the only way and your application might look different. That's okay. Every application is different and has different needs. But the important lessons that I wanted you to get out of this video is that you understand what each of these folders are, what they mean, what kind of files would go in each folder, and why we put certain files in certain folders and how we architected this whole thing. If you can get that out of this video, then I am super happy. I would consider my job being complete. And I wish you well on your journey when you're going to create your own React application using this folder structure as a base. So there you go. That was my preferred folder structure in React. If you think that I left something, that I forgot something, or that something should have been included here, please do leave a comment down below. If you've enjoyed this video, if you got any value from it whatsoever, please make sure to leave a like. Also subscribe because it really does help me out a lot. It shows me that you enjoy my content and that you want more. If you haven't joined the Discord, again, you are missing out. I post about things like this and way more stuff about React every single day. And if you're trying to learn in React, this is the best resource available on the internet for you. If you want to join, it'll be the first link in the description. It's completely free and I would love to see you on there. With that being said, my name has been Darius Cousin. This is Cousin Solutions. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in the next video. Ciao, ciao.